All right, welcome back, Daniel again. Another important topic in Scala we're going to talk about inheritance. So let's get right to it. All right, back in the ID, let's create a new Scala app. So right click on part two OP new Scala class. We're going to name this inheritance and traits. Make this an object. Okay. And of course, extends app. Cool. We have a lot of work to do and a lot of things to talk about. So, first of all, Scala has single class inheritance, much like other languages. So if I declare, for example, a class called animal with a small little method, what have I done? With a small little method called eat, uh, which just prints something like nom nom nom. Uh, the implementation is not really important. If I define a class cat, which say extends animal, notice the syntax, extends animal, this is uh, very similar to Java, then if I define a new cat, then I can call the method eat on this instance of cat because extending a class means inheriting all the non-private fields and methods. So if I say cat.eat, then that is a valid expression. And if I right click and run, this will print nom nom nom. Okay, let me switch to presentation mode so you can see this more clearly. Now in this context, we call cat a subclass of animal and animal we call a superclass of cat. Okay, so much like a, the inheritance model of most other languages, Scala offers single class inheritance. That is, you can only extend one class at a time. Of course, Scala offers much more intricate um, inheritance models when we talk about traits later, but patience. So we said a subclass only inherits non-private members of the superclass. Speaking of which, if I mark this as private with the keyword private, then calling the method eat on the instance of cat is not possible anymore because symbol eat is inaccessible from this place. So private will mark this method only accessible within this class only. Now the other access modifier that you can actually have here is protected instead of private, which marks this method only usable within this class only and within subclasses. So if I uh, extend or if I expand the class cat here and I create a new method called say crunch, which inside calls eat and uh, let's say it prints something else to the console like crunch crunch right calling the method eat actually calls the method eat inherited from class animal so uh, if i control click here it, uh, it will take me to the eat method that i inherit from the class animal so the protected modifier actually allows the use of um, the method eat inside the subclass as well but it's not accessible outside the subclass so i still can't call the method eat i can only call the public methods crunch in this case so the access modifiers that you can have in scala are private protected and no modifier which by default means public that means anyone can access this method once this uh, class is accessible all right all right, so this was pretty basic you've probably dealt with inheritance before in other languages so i'm not going to stress it too much. Now, I'm going to talk about constructors because they act in a very particular way when uh, dealing with inheritance. So let's say I define the little class person that uh, uh, in a similar way that we used earlier. So if I say this person has a name and an age and the uh, let's say I subclass this person with a class adult again with a name an age and let's say this guy has an ID card which just we uh, for the sake of um, the scenario here is only issued to adults and it's a string and we say extends person now this code will not compile and the compiler will complain that we have unspecified value parameters name and age now if you remember defining a class like this 
with the class signature also defines its constructor. Now, this code does not compile because when you instantiate a derived class, in this case, adult, the JVM will need to call a constructor from a parent class first. That's a JVM rule. So it needs to call a constructor of person before you call the constructor of adult. This happens in the internals of JVM. Now, the Scala compiler forces you to guarantee that there is a correct super constructed call when using such a derived class. So you must pass in the correct arguments. Otherwise, the compiler will look for, and in this case, fail to find a constructor that looks like this, like the one you provided. So in this example, the constructor person with no parameters does not exist. So you need to pass in the correct parameters like name and age. So this is the correct way of extending a class with parameters. Now, if you happen to be one of those people who define auxiliary constructors, for example, if I define an auxiliary constructor for person with def this, if you remember, with the implementation that, for example, this class uh, calls the, the constructor with name and the age zero, then you can also specify that constructor here in the extends clause. So if you say extends person name, this is also valid because the compiler found a constructor with just the name for the super class. Cool. So we have basic inheritance, we have access modifiers, and we have constructors. Let's talk about overriding. Now, Let's say I define a class dog, which dog, not duck, extends animal. And I want to supply a different implementation for the protected def eat method. So the way that I, would, that I would do that would be to use the keyword override. So override def eat, which let's say prints crunch crunch. So now if I instantiate a dog, say val dog equals a new dog, I can actually call dog.eat because this time the eat method is public. See that it has no other um, uh, privacy uh, modifier. So if I call the method dog eat, I'm going to see crunch crunch in the console. All right, so I'm seeing crunch crunch. I'm also seeing these two guys from the from the cat above. So overriding works for methods as it works for values and vars. So if I, for example, define a val, say, uh, creature type, which say it's uh, wild. So wild creature and dog can actually override that. So override val creature type and we can give it another value, say domestic, All right? And we can actually use it. So we can print line dog dot creature type. So of course, if I right click and run this, I'm actually going to see the string domestic because I've overwritten the value creature type in the class dog. If I hadn't, I would have seen the wild string to the console. Let's just comment this out and prove this. Of course. Now, fields, as opposed to methods, have the special property that they can be overwritten directly in the constructor as well. So if I copy this definition, let's copy it, not cut it and actually pass this as a class parameter, this actually overrides the value creature type. So if I pass in the new dog called, uh, let's say, k9, something like that, of course, I need to supply a parameter type, then this is a valid definition of the class dog with the uh, creature type field directly overridden in the constructor as a class parameter. It's as if I said, and let's comment the, the class dog here, it's as if I said class dog with some kind of uh, dog type as a string parameter extends animal. And I'm overriding the creature type field inside and the implementation is going to be dog type here. Okay, so 
um, overriding the value directly in the constructor or overriding the value creature type inside the class but uh, using the class parameter as the implementation is exactly the same thing. Okay, so um, just so you know that as a shorthand you can override fields from superclasses directly in the constructor. Cool, so you now know the basics of overriding. But the main idea of overriding is that all instances of derived classes will use the overridden things whenever possible. So in this case, all instances of dog will call this overridden method eat, which prints crunch crunch to the console whenever we call it. All right. But what's interesting though is we can do what we call a type substitution. So watch what I'm writing. Let's say I create um, val, let's call this unknown animal, and we specifically declare this to be an animal, and on the right hand side I'm passing in an expression that constructs a new dog with uh, the value k9. So as you can see we can declare something to be an animal and supply a dog instead. This is called in a very very broad sense called polymorphism. So watch what I'm doing. Let's say I kill the protected um, modifier here and I just want to use the method called eat in this unknown animal. So if I call unknown animal dot eat, if I right click and run this, I'm going to see crunch crunch. That is because this guy, the new dog, uses the overridden implementation of eat because unknown animal although declared an animal is actually an instance of dog so it will use dogs method instead so keep in mind a method call will always go to the most overridden version whenever possible this is one of the main powers of polymorphism we can actually use uh, the animal type as we see fit but inside the instances themselves might be derived um, instances of animal. So we, if we have a collection of animal like dogs and cats and giraffes and we call the eat method on all of them, each instance will know the derived implementation of eat to call. Alright, so you now know about overriding. Make sure you make the distinction between overriding, which means supplying a different implementation in derived classes, versus overloading which means supplying multiple methods with different signatures but with the same name in the same class. Alright, so we've discussed quite a bit. We've discussed basic inheritance, we've discussed uh, access modifiers, we've uh, talked about constructors, we've talked about overriding and overriding fields directly in the constructor, and we talk briefly about polymorphism. Let's talk about super. So super is used when you want to reference a method or a field from a parent class. So let's say for example that we expand the method eat in the class dog to also use the nom nom or the implementation of the method eat in the class animal. So the way that we would do that would be, and let's open some curly braces, and the IDE has uh, closed a curly brace for me, but I just need to make do with a proper indentation. Right, so if here I want to call the method from class animal, the method from uh, the method eat from class animal, I would use super dot eat. Okay, so super dot eat will uh, refer to the method eat in the super class. So if I right click and run this time, I'm also going to see nom nom. So I'm going to see nom nom and crunch crunch. All right, so this concept is pretty simple. Now. The final thing before I wrap up this video, the part one of inheritance, is going to be preventing overrides. Now, there are cases when you want to limit the overrides of your fields or methods, and there are a couple of ways to do it. One way is to use the keyword final. The keyword final, let's say I go to the class animal and I put a final before that, the final keyword will prevent derived classes from overriding the eat method. So if I go back to the dog class, this guy will not be overridden because method eat cannot override final member. So that was one method, use final on member. Now final can be used on the class itself. So if I say the class animal is final, 
So I put in a final modifier before the class, and I delete it from the member, then this prevents the entire class from being extended. So the extension for cat and for dog is illegal when you use the keyword final on the superclass. So illegal inheritance from final class animal. The numerical classes in Scala are, for example, final. The string type is also final. Okay, so this is another way to do it. So use final on the entire class. And the third option, and this is new, is to seal the class. Now, sealing the class is a softer restriction in that you can extend classes in this file. So in this file only, but prevent extension in other files. So if I seal the class animal by using the keyword sealed, then the extension of class animal with the, the subclasses cat and dog in this file are valid, but if I try to extend animal in another file, then that would be illegal. The sealed keyword is often used when uh, you want to be exhaustive in your uh, type hierarchy. So if, for example, uh, the only two possible animals in this world would be cats and dogs, then you would normally uh, use a sealed class animal and extend cat and dog in this file and prevent animal from being extended in other files because cats and dogs are the only types that you can have. All right, so we talked about a lot of things, but most are pretty basic and you've probably seen the concepts in other languages. Let's take a little break and in the next video, we're gonna talk about abstract data types and the Scala's type hierarchy.